happy Friday, everyone. It is me, Mini Unicorny, um, and I'm back with episode three of the Munimade podcast. I love doing these, and I'm so happy to be back for another episode. Welcome to my channel. If you're brand new, I just want to extend my warmest welcomes. I am M. Um, you can also call me Unicorny. Uh, mini unicorny as I have just been called lately and I love it. I'm obsessed. Um, but most people just call me M and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about creating all things crafting and I talk about my small business and the things that go into that. So welcome. Welcome to the Muna Made podcast. I'm really excited to get into it. I of course always have lots to talk with you guys about about. I want to thank you for being so sweet and supportive in last week's podcast. It was really difficult for me to talk about some of those things that were bothering me or that were on my mind, but thank you so much for being so kind and supportive. I really appreciate it. I read every single comment and I really love reading what you guys have to say and I think nothing is cooler than getting the comments rolling in and their comments about things that are at the beginning, middle, end of the video. And so it makes me feel like you guys truly watched it or listened to it, <laughs> which is really cool because, you know, that's not always the case on YouTube. Like, you know, people, oh, I'm sorry, little poopy guy. <laughs> um, people click on so much content all over YouTube but that doesn't mean that they watch it all. So I'm really thankful for you guys actually watching and interacting with my stuff. That is so cool. So thank you so much. Welcome on in. Welcome to the Muni Made Podcast. Um, <clears throat> let me take a drink here before we get into things. I'm drinking water today because I feel like I should be a little bit healthier and uh, hydrate more. So go me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's first talk about what's new with me. So this podcast is broken up between parts as all of the podcasts in this series are. So if you guys want to skip around and skip to a certain portion that I'm, I need to remove this guy. I keep hitting him. I talk too much with my hands. My hands are always flinging around. <laughs> um, but if you guys want to skip ahead to something else in the podcast, that's totally cool. That's why I put the chapters in the video and you guys can skip around. The sections are going to be as follows. What's new? Shop updates. Uh, then after that, I'm going to switch it around and talk about the things that I've finished like crafting projects that I've finished in the past two weeks and whips and then other stuff. So that is kind of the structure of it. Oh, and yes, I post these every other Friday. So if I if all else fails and I don't get anything else up on my YouTube channel, which certainly there are times where that is the case, if all else fails, you guys know that you will see a video from me every other Friday. Cool? Yeah. So let's get into it. What is new with me? What's been going on with me? Lots of just random life things. Um, So there was an ice storm in Texas I want to say, what? gosh, I don't know what day that was. It was like last weekend, right? So I'm filming this on a Thursday. Last weekend, maybe, mm, I think it was like Wednesday, last end of week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so I don't know, whatever. We had ice in Texas and <laughs> it's just so funny when that happens because nobody knows what to do with themselves here. Everything closes, businesses close, schools close, everybody freaks out. They go to the store, they buy a bunch of groceries, they buy up all the bread and eggs and toilet paper and they just freaking panic. They act like they're going to be stuck at home for six weeks or something. You know, it's just wild how much people freak out over ice here in Texas. And that's not to say that, yeah, it's bad. When we get bad weather, it's bad because we just don't have the the infrastructure, okay? Like, we don't have... I don't think our city puts a whole lot of time and energy or money into getting plows and things because why would we need that? It hardly ever snows or ices here. Texas is usually pretty mild in the winter and it hardly ever snows or ices. So we just like, don't really ever need those things. And as far as individual people, 
We don't really need to spend a lot of money on expensive snow gear and thick coats and most people do not have snow shovels. We just don't have those things because why? We don't need them. So every so often when the bad winter weather does come, everybody panics and they have no idea what to do with themselves and it's just, it's really funny going through that. Um, If you heard on the news last year, literally a year ago in February, we had a really, really bad snowstorm and the weather's dropped like to record low temperatures that we are just not accustomed to here in Texas. And we got so much snow, (laughs) more snow than I have ever seen in my life combined. We got in one a couple days last year and it was so bad that we lost power our power grid could not handle it because our heating systems here in texas are electric now correct me if i'm wrong i know a lot of people up north have you have to put oil or gas or something in your heater i don't know (laughs) you guys can let me know in the comments but you have a different kind of heater right ours is all electric our air conditioning and our heater is on the same unit and it's just electric so if the power goes out the heating goes out which is really bad when you've got sub-zero temperatures was it sub-zero I can't remember it was really cold it was way too cold for me that's all I know um but I think you guys have different heating up north where it's really cold where if the power does go out you still have heating I don't know let me know but we had a catastrophe and our power grid could not handle it last year And so a lot of people were sitting with the power out and I'm talking about for days of no power. And at first thought, you're like, oh, boohoo, you can't get on your computer. No, we didn't have heating for days. And it was really, it was definitely way below freezing outside. So yikes. (laughs) It was, you know, I think a lot of people got sick and I'm not sure if anybody passed away from it, but it was really dangerous. It was really dangerous. Thankfully, my house, we were put on a rotating schedule. So we would have 45 minutes of power, uh, then like 30 minutes of no power. And they would just kind of alternate like that. So thankfully we had enough power to keep warm enough in the house. We still had to bundle up, but we had enough power to where we weren't getting sick. My parents had no power for like two days and their whole pool froze and broke the pool. They had to pay thousands of dollars of reparations on their pool. It was chaos. So this year it wasn't as bad. Um, We just had a little bit of ice come through. It wasn't pretty snow or anything. It was just yucky ice that came through coated all of our roads, coated all of our trees, broke a lot of our trees, and just made things a little messy for a couple of days. But people were extra freaked out this year because I think they have trauma from last year. (laughs) I don't really blame them though, especially if they were the people that were sitting with no power in their house. I don't blame them for being afraid (laughs) because I don't think any of us trust the Texas power grid anymore. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really bad. And sometimes in the summer when it's really hot, our power can't keep up either because all of the people blasting their air conditioning, it pulls a lot of power and then everything just breaks. Chaos. But uh, everything was good with me. My power flickered twice. It was enough to ruin some 3D prints, (laughs) which was annoying, but there was no huge major inconvenience. Also, a lot of people last year, because the power was out, Um, their pipes froze all in their house and a lot of people had leaks and lots of expensive repairs. I don't know how you people who live in Arctic places during the winter, how on earth do you do it? I don't know how you survive. The fact that you have to scrape your car off every time you want to go somewhere, shovel your driveway or Oh, it just seems like so much inconvenience and you're just cold all the time. Ugh, miserable. Listen to me, bratty Texan complaining. (laughs) But I just don't know how you guys do it. It just seems like I like having the winter weather once a year. That's fine. It's pretty to look at when I don't have to go anywhere. But it is a major inconvenience. And it's kind of a bummer if you're trapped at home and the roads are too bad to drive. Like, 
I don't know. I like to go get my Taco Bell. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be prevented from doing that. <laughs> but everything's good. It's all good here. And it's really funny because it's been way above freezing. I think today the high is 69 degrees. <laughs> The high is 69 degrees today, and we still have a patch of ice in our backyard. Explain that. I don't know how. It's just in the shade, and it will not me melt. Ugh. But we survived. Everything is good. Our power did not go out, so yay! Maybe maybe we'll get through. Uh, I don't even know. When is the official end of winter? It's already February. To me, it seems like we should be out of winter, but I don't know. Maybe we won't get any more weather this season, and uh, we'll be good to go, but... Yeah, so that's that's what's with me. Um, also lately I've been kind of preoccupied because I got a new phone. I'm trying to make sure there's nothing personal on here, but I got a new phone. Yes, my old phone is sitting somewhere else, but I upgraded my phone from a Galaxy S9 Plus, which is an Android phone. And I went ahead and decided to try out getting an iPhone. <laughs> I know a lot of the iPhone cult members, for lack of a better word, all the people that are obsessed with Apple and just worship Apple. Um, I know a lot of people will be thrilled to see that I have converted. This is not my first time having an iPhone, though. I did have one way back in 2014, 2015 or so. Uh, I think it was the iPhone 5. And I like to kind of alternate, have an iPhone, Android, iPhone, and you know. So I decided since I've had an Android for a long time that I would try out getting an iPhone. However, I haven't been super happy with it. And I don't want to offend any Apple heads or anything, but I have been struggling with the camera. So I did get the iPhone 13, the regular, not the mini, not the pro, nothing like that. I got the iPhone 13 and I did go ahead and get 256 gigabytes of memory in it because I take a lot of pictures for my business. I take a lot of product photos and that takes up a lot of memory. So I thought it would be nice to have a higher memory. I did get the blush pink one. It's really a very faint pink, so it's hard to tell. And I do have a case on it. But I did get the blush pink version as well. And I love everything about the iPhone. I love the whole operating system. I love the look and the feel. It just feels really luxurious and polished. But the one thing that is kind of driving me a little nuts, guys, is the camera, <laughs> which is like a huge deal breaker to me because like I said, I take a lot of pictures. So I have been struggling trying to get good product photos and it's gotten to the point where I even have considered returning it. And I went to the Apple, I'm not the Apple store, the, the T-Mobile phone store and was considering returning it. And the biggest thing for me is the colors are off. Please, for the love of God, somebody tell me if there's just something I don't know that I'm doing wrong and tell me how to fix it in the comments. The colors are off. When I take a picture, everything seems to have kind of like a yellowy tint and it over contrasts everything. It's like there's a lot of post-processing being done where the iPhone is manipulating the colors and it's just not the same color that I see in real life, which is really annoying when you take product photos. You want it to be real to color. You want it to be true. You want it to represent the actual color that your eyes are seeing in real life. Um, so that's that's the biggest issue I've been facing. I have been sitting down to take some product photos and I'm like, that is not the same color that I see. I even asked in my Discord, I was taking a picture of a silver tag and it came out gold. And I asked in my Discord, I said, what color is this tag? Guess what everyone said? They said it's gold. And I was like, that is a silver tag item that is a silver tag what is going on so that's not good and I've been really frustrated with that and before you say oh there's a setting that makes the screen yellowy to blah 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 block out some blue light I've already changed that setting I have already played with the um what do they call them photo styles or whatever where I change like make it more cool tone no matter what I do the colors are just showing up off 
and I don't know what's going on. And yes, I could um, edit the photos after, but at the end of the day, I take so many pictures and I, I need them quick. I need to just have barely minimal edits and be able to upload them. You know, having to add on a lot of extra work to post-process photos, that's just really annoying for me. So um, yeah, the second problem I've been having is focusing when close up. And that has been a little bit of a struggle for me. But the guy did tell me that with the iPhone, like you don't hold it physically close up. You have to back away and zoom in for it to focus, which I'm really not used to. My old phone, I would hold it really close to what I'm taking a picture of and it would focus. But if I show you guys, I'll like take a picture of the camera. If I physically hold the iPhone close to the camera, it won't focus. It's not good. It's really not good at all. It's a blurry, unfocused picture. Um, so what I've learned is you got to kind of like hold the phone further away and zoom in if you want it to focus. Um, which is weird for me and I worry that I'm going to get, I don't know, I'm not, I'm, it's a little bit of a learning curve where I worry I'm going to have to struggle to get better angles and stuff. So I don't even know if that picture is in focus. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So I, I, yeah, there's a lot <laughs> I'm trying to learn with the iPhone camera, but as of right now, I really like my Android camera better and I'm just like, ugh. There's, there's a lot of fees and money I would lose to return this phone and I'm just, uh, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. And I also miss the pro camera mode on Android where you have, you can manually focus the lenses and you could change the ISO and the aperture and the white balance. You can manually change all of that. And yes, there's a few things you can change on the iPhone, but not as much. So yeah, that's kind of booty kind of booty but maybe perhaps it's just a learning curve and I will learn how to use this camera better maybe I don't know working on it if you guys have any tips or any experience with some of the things that I'm complaining about with the iPhone camera please let me know if you have an iPhone 13 and you know how to take beautiful pictures that are true to color let me know because a freaking I am it like oversaturates it and just makes it look really weird so I don't know. Let me know your tips and suggestions down below. I have 14 days from when I bought it to decide if I want to keep it or um, go and exchange it for something else. And it's just kind of a difficult decision because I will lose out on some money that I've already spent, which is upsetting. But I don't want to stick with a phone that I'm not happy with. So let me know what you guys think. Um, oh, and before you say, oh, we'll just keep your old phone and use that as a camera. That's okay. I just bought a brand new phone and spent like freaking a thousand dollars on it. Don't you think that it should be good and better than my old phone? And also, uh, I have to trade that in. Um, I, I got $200 off the phone to trade in my old phone. And if I didn't trade that in, then I would, I would owe $200. So that's also kind of a yikes option. So, <laughs> mm. As far as what I talked about last week about feeling burnt out and overworked and overstimulated, I'm still dealing with a lot of those feelings. That doesn't go away um, quickly always, but I am working on making some positive changes. Some people left some feedback about, you know, just just having boundaries with work. And I, I completely agree. I need to set boundaries and limits to how available I am and how much work I do in a day. So I've been working on having a cutoff time at night and being okay with that and being like, okay, I'm not going to work past 8 p.m., which sounds late, but I also sleep in kind of late sometimes. So it's reasonable. Trust me. Um, <laughs> um, so sometimes I think I'm not going to work past 8 p.m. today. Okay. So at 8 p.m., I'm going to put it down. I'm going to stop and I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm not I'm going to stop just doing all this stuff for other people and I'm going to chill watch some Netflix do something that I want to do so I've been working on that it's really hard to say no and to to cut off especially when you have so much on your to-do list um I feel really guilty cutting it off I feel like wow 
how dare I go sit and diamond paint when I know that I have a to-do list that's a mile long. It feels wrong. It feels like I am breaking the rules somehow and I don't know. I just feel really guilty about it, but I'm working on being okay with it and accepting that I am not superwoman. (laughs) I only have a certain amount of hours in the day and there are personal needs that I need taken care of. You know, I got to have sleep. I've got to have self-care. I am also diagnosed with anxiety and depression. So like I've got to take care of my mind and there's a lot of extra time that goes into that. I have to have like extra recharging time as maybe the next person to keep mentally healthy, you know, and so it just is hard. (laughs) It's just hard because I I have so many things on my to-do list that I feel like if I'm not doing them and I'm not progressing in them, it feels, I feel the panic rise. I almost feel more anxiety not working, which sounds so ridiculous, but it's kind of a toxic cycle because then I get just really burnt out and I start to have these feelings of like, oh my God, can I please just do something for myself and not be working? Like, you know what I mean? So I'm working on it. I'm trying, I'm trying to have, you know, cut off times and say, okay, well today that's enough work for today. I'm done. I'm going to then take the evening off to do what I want. So I'm working on that. Also working on not always being available for messages and you know, not always replying to them immediately. Like, it's okay if somebody sends me a message at 10 p.m. at night. It's okay for them to wait until the next day to get a response from me, okay? Like, I don't have to be available 24 hours a day. I'm just having to accept that I am not perfect. I'm not superwoman. There's only so many things that I can do, and I just need to be happy and satisfied with the things that I do accomplish. Even if it's a bad mental health day or... I am really struggling with energy because that's something that's really difficult for me is with my body and my depression and things like that. There's very real physical symptoms where I just do not have the energy or I don't have the mental focus to complete tasks. Um, And sometimes like they're everyday tasks like showering, you know, (laughs) which sounds crazy to people that don't understand or don't relate but I'm sure that a lot of you watching probably can understand and relate and so uh yeah I just have to be aware that you know not everything goes to plan sometimes on some days I don't get as much done and that is okay it is okay to not just be a production machine I'm not a machine I'm a person with needs and wants and desires and fluctuating motivation fluctuating energy so I just need to be kind to myself and be okay with the things that I do accomplish even if it's not much even if I don't feel like it was my most productive day if I did anything at all I should just be thankful and grateful to be alive and be able to able-bodied and able-minded for the most part to do the things that I do do. So with that being said, in the wise words of my favorite band ever, Coin, you should check them out, C-O-I-N, often stylized, all capitals. (laughs) I love Coin and I shout their praises any chance I get. But in the wise words of Coin, learning and loving that's what I'm doing. I'm learning and I'm loving. That is what I'm doing. (laughs) I just have to repeat that, you know. I'm learning, I'm growing, and I'm loving, and I'm trying to see the beauty in life as I go and um, keep my head above water. So (laughs) that's what's been going on with me. Wow, I feel like I thought I had nothing going on with me, but that was that was like a long part of the podcast. Anyways, let's talk about my shop and what's new with Muna Maid. All right, so shop updates. We talked a bit last week about a lot of things, <laughs> um, but this week I'm excited to continue talking about some things that are in the works and uh, new things that are coming and all of that. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys with the diamond painting trays in my shop that are very popular, I talk about them a lot and I hope you guys understand if you're not into diamond painting or into my trays or whatever, I hope you understand me talking about them a lot because they're 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 like 
my thing. <laughs> They're my job. So it's a big part of my life and a big part of my shop. So we've got some new colors coming that I want to show you guys. I thought that'd be fun to start showing new colors that we're trying and putting in the shop in the podcast. So let me show you. So there's two colors that have already been released. I don't really do any big, wow, new color. I, I don't, I don't try to drive too much hype about it. Like I don't publish like new color available now or put on the listing like new. I don't, I usually just briefly tease the new colors in my Instagram stories and maybe help people, uh, get people's help to name the colors, things like that. But I don't really do any big event or big release or anything like that. So two of these colors are already available. Um, we did take a lot of custom orders for them. And the reason why you haven't seen them in the ready to ship stock is because we prioritize custom orders. So every time we print a tray in that color, it's going whoop right to fulfill a custom order. And so we don't have any left over to do ready to ship stuff. So if that makes sense, if there's ever a color and you're like, oh my gosh, why is this color never listed on Wednesdays? It's probably more than likely because there's just, it's a popular color and there's a lot of custom orders for it. So if there's a color you really want, place a custom order. Anyways, so the two colors... These are new and already available. We've got this one that um, has already been named. I posted kind of a teaser for it on Instagram. Guys, look how sparkly and incredible. This is a tray set, by the way. This is a large Munamade diamond painting tray, and it does have a lid on it and a stopper. So this is a complete set. Guys, the sparkle on this is un freaking real. So I posted this on my Instagram and asked for help naming it. And a lot of people said something along the lines of starry night and things like that. But I wanted to incorporate, like, I thought it was very sapphire looking. And to tell you the truth, I really wanted to name it Lapis Lazuli because I've been playing Minecraft lately and I love Minecraft. I've played it for years. I really wanted to name it Lapis Lazuli, but everyone said something along the lines of starry night or something. So I compromised and I was like, okay, sapphire sky. So that is a new color. It's beautiful. It's a deep, sparkly blue, and it is so sparkly. So, so sparkly. I will say the more sparkle you get, the more chance you have of having more friction with the drills when you're pouring them out. I've personally never had a problem with that because if any drills are sticking, I just tap the side, you know, burp, burp it. You just tap it a little bit and they'll come right out. So I personally never had a problem with that, but I have had like some people with complaints and returns and things because they didn't like the sparkly trays. So just be aware of that. The more sparkle you get, yes, it's prettier, but it might cause more friction. The second color, which is uh, also a sparkly tray that's already available is, I called it Pop the Champagne because I thought it was a very champagne color. On cameras, I feel like it does come across more yellow than it is in person. Like I'm looking at this in the viewfinder now and I really don't think it's this yellow in person. It's more of a champagne. It's kind of translucent. Uh, and it's more of a champagne color. It has golden sparkles in it, which is pretty unique. The Sapphire Sky has silver sparkles. This one has golden sparkles in it. Okay, let's try to get it to focus. Um, if you're watching this in, I mean, everyone is watching the video technically, but not everyone's looking at the screen. It has golden sparkles in it. And as you can see where my fingers are against the wall, it is translucent. So I like calling those, um, colors drink, drink related things because drinks are translucent. I don't know. When I looked at it, I was like, that looks like champagne. So we call that pop the champagne. It is pretty similar to ice lemonade. It's just less yellow and it has golden sparkles in it as opposed to, I think, Ice Lemonade has either, like, I think it has silver sparkles. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. So, with that being said, those are already released. And we have some new colors that we're trying out. And by trying out, um, we, I purchased a spool of filament. That is how trays are made. You purchase, I'll show you exactly what a spool looks like. Just knocking over trays. Oh, this hasn't even been opened yet. I'm going to open it. Hope my husband don't mind. I'm going to open it. So, 
filament comes like this. It comes in a spool and it's a spool of PLA plastic. Um, I believe it's made from corn starches. Listen, I'm not a scientist. I don't know exactly how they make it. It's supposed to be biodegradable and uh, yeah, made from corn PLA plastic. It's different than regular plastic. So it is like this. It's on a spool. It's wound up into like a strand and use that to 3D print with. So we're testing out a couple of new colors. If they're good, then I will list them. I will name them and put them as part of our regular color lines. We have translucent, shiny, uh, hold on, hold on, let me start over. Tran <laughs> translucent, shiny, sparkly, magic colors, and then we have specialty colors. Is that all of them? We also have color changing ones. We have heat color changing and sunlight color changing. And then the specialty ones are ones that come in sets. And the reason why we do that and we don't sell them separately at all is because the color doesn't change fast enough. Um, and when you sell them as a set, then you get more colors in it. And yeah, we can't do both because then we just have like leftover lids and stoppers that don't match anyways is complicated but we're trying out a few new colors this is a new magic color we are trying out i don't know what i'm going to call it if it works out um there's another magic color we tried before that didn't work out it was purple and pink and it looked great on the spool but when printed it just looked straight up purple the pink blended into the purple and there wasn't a difference so this one um i think that the colors are more enough of a stark difference. Um, as you can see, one side is a royal purple color and the other side is golden. So I think this is enough of a stark difference to where um, it'll come out good. To me, this gives me Mardi Gras vibes or like royal family vibes or just, I don't know, gives me something like that. So I don't know what I'll name it. We'll see if it works out, but that'll be a new magic color if it does work out. Then... I've got another magic color to try. This one's really fun. So, and when I say magic colors, the reason why we call them magic colors is because if you guys are watching this, as you saw, the color changes depending on the direction you look at it from. So that is why I call it magic because it is. It's a little magical. It's a little magical. So this one, one from one angle, it is green. It's very green. And from another angle, it's like hot pink. Isn't that so beautiful? I mean, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So this definitely gives me watermelon vibes. So I think we'll call it something along those lines. But I'm very funny about names. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but all my sparkly colors have two words in them. <laughs> well, except for pop the champagne. That has three technically, but you know nobody's counting. Um, but yeah, this will be watermelon or something along those lines. We're going to try it out and see how it works. Cause yeah, sometimes with those, the colors just blend together and it doesn't look good. So we'll see how that comes out. <laughs> Next one that I've had a lot of questions about already, cause I did show a teaser on my Instagram. Ooh, I actually have a tray in this one to show you guys. This one's already been tested enjoy the, enjoy the crinkle. Okay. I know y'all are about to be real excited over this. It is a rainbow sparkly filament. Yeah. And it's translucent. So we got like, we're checking off three boxes with one filament. Rainbow and sparkly. Holy cow. It is so beautiful. It's got the most glitter I've ever seen in a filament in it. It is amazing. And I've already had so many questions on it. I just showed a picture on my Instagram stories. Everybody's like, <gasps> when can I buy that? Well, as of right now, all I have is this one spool and I've checked already <laughs> and it's already sold out. And I, sometimes these companies are not super great about restocking more. This is all I got. I am more than happy to make as many trays as I can get out of this. Um, 
but that's all I got for now. That one's going to be in super high demand. Uh, we did print a tray with it and it did print well. So I think this will be something that we offer. Um, now you'll notice that it, you don't get all of the colors in the tray. This is a small tray as well. You don't get all of the colors. Let me open it. One of my nails is short and it is horrible. I hate it. Anyways, you don't get all of the colors in it, but you do get some color change, especially with the small tray. With a large tray, you will get more color change, of course, of course, because there's more surface area. But do you see how sparkly this is? Oh my gosh. And the color does change. The bottom of this tray is like more of a greenish tone, and then it changes to like an orangish, and then... The lid is orange and then it goes to a deeper orange and then the stopper is a red. So it does change colors. Um, you can see, especially in person, you can visibly see a color gradient, but you're not going to get the full rainbow spectrum in a single tray. Um, we'll see how it comes out with large trays. And sometimes we try to print them two at a time to force more color change. But sometimes the quality suffers a lot when we do that. So I'm always quality overall I you know I want things to be the best quality possible so we'll see but this might be coming soon rainbow sparkle I think I'll literally if I do release this I'll literally just call it a rainbow glitter or something um but yeah and this one's really unique because if you look closely it has both silver and gold glitter there's two colors of glitter in there so it's just fabulous it's fabulous and I already know that this is going to be in very high demand and sadly all we have is this one spool I will buy more I just don't buy more than one when we test something because I don't I don't know if it's going to print well so I'll buy more whenever they relist it but oh so pretty once again keep in mind the more glitter you get the more friction is possible because of the glitters but I've never had a problem with it but some people do complain of that like you can feel the glitter so it's possible that it could cause an issue, but ah, so pretty. It's just got the classic rainbow colors, like uh, red, yellow, orange, red, green, all that. So, yep, that's coming. And then there's another one we haven't tried yet. I'm really not sure how it's going to work out, but we're going to try it. And this one, I'm going to open this one as well. This one is also a gradient. Oops. I didn't... Okay, that is like really sealed in there. This one's also a gradient. Oh, there it goes. Um, but the color doesn't change very fast on it. The thing is, is with the trays, they're a big flat object. And so color changing filament is tricky to get the right gradient and the right look. So this is also a color gradient, color changing one. And this one is just blue gradients. And I believe, yeah. So if you look really closely, which I have no idea if this is going to translate on camera, there is a blue shiny part to the filament. And then the darker blue part actually does have glitter in it, I believe. So when this is printed, I believe you're going to have parts of like glitter and just silky I don't know not sure but here it is and I'm not sure how fast the color changes or how good the gradient will look but we are going to try it out no idea about name if you have suggestions let me know in the comments um no idea but we're gonna try it out see how it goes so those are some new colors that are coming soon and I thought I would just show them in the podcast so you guys could get excited Along with that, um, you may or may not have noticed, but we have started listing something called, I don't remember exactly what the title of the listing is that I put up, but I'm calling it my monthly curated set. Let me get it. So I'm calling it my monthly curated set. And since this month is February, I thought I would do a Valentine set. So Every month I had the idea of doing this just because I want to have some fun and play with colors. And for example, let's say we get a spool to try out of a color or a brand and it doesn't really work out. Maybe it's too similar to something else we have or it's, you know, not as popular and we don't want to continue to purchase it. Maybe we'll just do incorporate that 
spool of filament or you know the few spools we have into a special curated set so sometimes these are going to be like limited edition colors um this month it is limited edition because the name on the side is x or not the name but the text on the side says xoxo it is customized i need a drink oh um, <laughs> it is customized and I designed it for Valentine's Day. It features a bubblegum tray, a hot pink stopper, and a pearl lid, which is awesome. And I think it looks so pretty when it comes together. It does have the Immunimade logo on the bottom like this. And these are just so fun. And I love being able to play with colors and put together mixed matched pretty sets like this. So I hope you guys like this type of thing. Um, I really do. I really hope that this is fun. And if you guys like this, I will continue doing it in future months. Let me know. Um, but yeah, we have them in both sizes. And I want to continue doing this and just have these little um, curated sets and color combinations that yours truly puts together each month for you guys because you know not everyone um, knows what colors look good together and I can go and look at my filament collection and pick out what will look good together so I don't know it's just a way for me to have some fun so we're doing that um, that has already been going on we list more of these every Wednesday and uh, just in the regular restock. So every single Wednesday, we list a few of these and we're gonna continue doing it all February long. Um, so each restock in February will have a few of those trays, even though Valentine's Day will have passed at the end of February, but that's okay, we're still gonna list some trays. It has also been, not requested, but I got the idea, and I'm gonna tell you who, I got the idea from Diamonds and Washi, Katie, um, just in my chats with her, to maybe do a checklist for all of the colors that we offer. And I'm currently working on that. Um, it's taken me a minute because I, I started doing it in one format and then I was like, mm, maybe not. I, I want it to be easily editable for both me and you guys whenever I do publish that. I know I have a lot of customers that, that love to collect all of the Munamade tray colors, you know, and collect all the things. So I thought it'd be fun to make it easy for them and make a checklist uh, because I was told that some of you already do that on your own. And I was like, why don't I just make an official one? You know, I think that'd be a lot of fun. But the problem is, is I'm trying to decide how to do it and what colors to include. So if I make a checklist, do I, do you guys want me to include every single color we've ever offered, even discontinued ones? Or do you want me to only put the currently available colors on it? Do you want me to include the curated sets in the checklist? Like I'm trying to think exactly what to include and what not to include, but I want to make it in maybe like a PDF format. Um, something that is, you can either print out or just, you know, check it off on your computer. Um, but yeah, I want it to be nice and easy for you guys. I know I've got a lot of collectors out there and I thought it'd be just a fun way and an organizational thing that I know a lot of people like. And I know that Katie will use it at the very least. <laughs> and Jacqueline, hi guys. <laughs> and Robin and maybe Dawn, Ginny, <laughs> Beverly. Uh, I'm just thinking of all these people that <laughs> collect, collect like every color of Trey definitely Beverly. Beverly, I think you have like so many colors. <laughs> and Dawn, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate you guys. Um, but I want to make an organizational thing for you guys to organize your collection. So let me know how you want me to do it. Do you want to have separate columns for small and large trays or do you just want to have, I don't know, how, what kind of checklist do you guys want? I'm working on doing that for you guys. Just let me know what you want in it and I'll, I'll do it because I think it's fun. Um, and you guys can see truly how crazy I am and how many colors we have. Oh my God, we have so many and I'm always adding more as you guys just saw. So i um, working on that. An update on the new Munamade tray design. We're still working on it. My husband, my, my, not my husband. Oh my God. How embarrassing. My brother, <laughs> my brother, my brother from the same mother, my brother, <laughs> He is a full-time college student, and so he's really busy, and I'm always pestering him, and he's just like, oh, I've got homework, and I'm like, come on, 
Um, and, uh, but he's doing the best he can. So thank you for you guys' patience. And we don't like to rush anything. We like to have things, um, tested and, and just, just, we like to have our, our quality, you know, you can't rush perfection. So I've been using the prototype. It's great. The lines are great. Everything flips over wonderful. I love the how the lines are shortened in the corners. It really helps the drills slide out better. I love how uh, thick and chunky the new trays are. They feel indestructible. Um, and then we're currently working on the fit of the stopper. It's a little different. As you can tell, this is a prototype, so do not judge it. This is not a final version. It's a little bit different. I, I hesitate showing this. You know we got copycats. They're going to be like, and they're going to trace the shape. Y'all, get out of here. <laughs> they're going to write it down and trace the shape and all of that and write down everything I'm saying. But I like to also be transparent with you guys and share our process. So um, we have changed the spout shape a little bit. Not by like a whole lot. Like it still retains the same shape that you guys know and love. Um, but we did elongated and, and edit that and then we um kind of made this flat part on the stopper as you can see it has like a neck now uh right underneath the rectangle part and it's just a design that helps it fit in there better the goal with the old stoppers they just kind of slid in over the top and depending on the color of the filament and stuff it doesn't always stay put very well like it just slides in and i really like that ease of use but I get like when you're shaking it, you know, it wiggles. And if you shake up and down, then the stopper goes bye bye. So I understand. But I would love for you guys to leave me feedback on this because this is something that I'm conflicted about. But this is the old stopper. It just slides right in. Um, the new stopper we're trying to make in a way that it kind of like clicks into place and stays there. Um, but it is a little bit harder to remove. Not like hard, but harder. Um, so we're just kind of changing it a little bit. And as you can see, or here, excuse me, there's like an audible click. Did y'all hear that? When you put the stopper in, there's like a click and it, it like clicks, clicks into place and it is, it is put, it is stayed put, right? Um, now to remove it, you have to kind of put your fingers on both ends and like wiggle a little bit and yeah it, it's a little bit tougher and this isn't a final version I have asked him to make it a little less tight so we might reduce it by a layer or two or whatever but like it's not hard but it is it is more snug and it does stay put so let me know what you guys think. Do you want stoppers that are real snug in there and don't jiggle around or do you like the ease of how easy these are to just slip in the top. Let me know what you prefer and it will greatly help me figure out the direction that we want to continue to go and the kind of fit that we're going for. Also, let me know what symbol you want on the end of the stoppers. Our old large stoppers have stars. So let me know what symbol. I'm sure you guys are going to want a diamond on the end, but then it's like, but then what do I put on the small one? Let me know. Let me know your feedback. But we are making progress on it, guys. He's currently working on, we're finalizing the fit of the stopper, doing all of the polishing details, and then he's going to start working on the lid and the fit of the lid. So we're working on it, guys. Please have patience. He is a full-time college student, and there's only so much that I can nag him before he gets really mad. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I just squirted water everywhere. That's cool. So we're working on that. That is still very much in progress and I'm really excited for it. And I've been enjoying using the prototype so much. I have been diamond painting a lot, which brings me in <laughs> to my finishes. Oh, one last thing. I almost totally forgot about the the crochet kits. Thank you for the feedback for those. Um, I really, really loved everyone's suggestions to include a measuring tape, and I am definitely going to look into that. Also, I love the suggestion of including some pins because when you're sewing together amigurumi, it's really helpful when you put the pins in the arms and legs and stuff. So I love those suggestions. Thank you so much for leaving them. Um, I will look into it and give you guys an update in the future. It takes a forever to for these things to arrive from China where I'm purchasing them from. So, yep. 
Okay, so you guys know I love making things on my knitting machine. Okay. Yes, I made more ear warmers. I know that we're getting to the end of the winter season, but I made more ear warmers. Um, I made a pair of these purple ear warmers. The other one has already been shipped off, but here is this one. This one's already spoken for. I'm sorry if you love it. I'm so sorry. I need to package this one up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so pretty. And I made this out of like my new favorite yarn. I love it so much. So I found this yarn at Hobby Lobby called Katarina. Have any of you guys used this? It is so beautiful and it's so soft. I can't explain to you what it is. It's like a, I don't know, it's just a really good texture and the colors it comes in are really pretty and it's special because it's 90% acrylic and 10% nylon. So it's not 100% acrylic and I think the nylon is what makes it feel extra soft. Also, it's a little, it's like a two-ply roving style, so it's not super twisted, and there are parts of it I found that were, like, not consistent in diameter, um, which it doesn't bother me, but it's okay. It was consistent enough in diameter, let me say that. It wasn't bad, but there were parts that were, like, a little bit less tightly twisted, um, but this one specifically, the colors, oh my gosh, the colors. This is in the colorway called Aztec Blanket. It is so pretty. It is a size three yarn, which I was nervous about using in my knitting machine and how the headbands would come out. Now it is lighter. It's like less thick than my regular headbands I've been making with size four yarn. So it's a little bit less warm and a little bit less thick, um, but I think that's okay. But it came out so pretty. I think the deal with all of these Katarina yarns is that they're all a really nice gradient. I mean, look how nice that gradient is. If you're watching, it is purple to gray to a almost like a charcoal color to a blue. And then it even pops into this like variegated section between purple and gray. It's just magical. Like you don't even know what you're going to get. It's so beautiful. I think every skein is probably going to come out with a different combination of colors. It's fabulous. I want to go back and buy every color. It is great. I love it. <laughs> I just love the yarn that comes from Hobby Lobby. My favorite brands of yarn is I love this yarn and Yarn B, which might even be produced by the same company. I don't know. But uh, yeah, Yarn B, Katarina, try it out. It's really soft. It's beautiful. It comes in fabulous colors. Oh my gosh. So uh, yeah, I already used up all the skein of this one. I got two ear warmers out of it plus I got two ear warmers out of it plus this leftover. And the colorway for that one is called Thistle. Thistle. Th say that 10 times fast. <laughs> thistle. I don't know why I can't say that. Why can I not? I feel like I'm saying that funny. Thistle. Okay. That's the colorway of this one if you guys are interested. Fabulous yarn. It is my new favorite yarn. I can't wait to make more things with it. I love it. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, I'll insert a picture of the other one that I made that I've already sent off just so you guys can see the difference in how the yarn works up. So I made two more headbands this week and then I showed you guys last week my new toy, my smaller size Addy knitting machine and I have been playing with that a little bit. Not as much as I want to continue playing with it but, um, oh, where's the other one? You, I asked you if you guys thought that the thinner headbands would be cool to make and everybody was like, yeah. So I was like, okay. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how that conversation went. So I've been making some thinner headbands. Yeah. Look at them. They're so pretty. The colors. I just love, 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 love. Colorful, variegated gradients. Love it. So I've made a few of these. Only a few so far, but I would like to make more and play with different yarns and different colors. And um, I really, this is a size four yarn, so it is pretty thick as far as headbands go. I think I want to try making some out of either size three or size two yarn and see how I like that. Um, just to make them a little bit less thick. But I do like the really thick headbands. As we discussed, it's really good for holding your hair out of your way for makeup or washing your face or just while you're working. It's just a good, thick, great headband. Or while working out, if you are into that sort of thing. <laughs> 
Mm. It's really good. So I made a couple of these. I'll post a picture. Um, one of them is already gone, but I have these two. And as you can see, they come out with completely different colors in them. This is the same yarn, but they come out with completely different colors. And I just, yes, I think that's so fun. I think it's so fun. Ah, I love it. How beautiful. How beautiful. They're so bright and rainbow and you got like fuchsias in there and all that. So yeah, I'll post a picture of all three of them so you can see all three of them together. But yeah, I made some of those and that was fun to make as well. I think, oh, I have another finish. <laughs> I have an amigurumi. I have just, oh my God, I don't know. I feel bad because I feel like that's what a lot of people want from me. They want me to make, you know, a bunch of amigurumis and crochet things. And I love crocheting, don't get me wrong. But I think I'm just at a lull in my, in my crojo right now. My cro, my crochet motivation, my crojo, I don't know it's a thing. I think I am at a lull part in my crojo, okay? I just don't have the the motivation to crochet nonstop. I don't know what is going on with me. Hopefully, it'll come back. I know it'll come back. It's just one of those things. It comes in waves, comes in cycles. So, yeah, I only finished one crochet thing <laughs> since we last talked. That just seems weird. That seems weird. Like, am I okay? Do I have a fever? Am I sick? I don't know. But it's a really beautiful thing. I don't have it with me. I've already shipped it off. I'll put a picture in. But it's a cute heart tree slash desk plant thingy for Valentine's Day. And I had a lot of fun making it. The pattern was by, I don't know, but I should look to tell you guys. Oh, the pattern was by Magic Filament um, on Etsy. And yeah really cute pattern. Magic Filament makes some really, really cute stuff. And I really love how this turned out. I put some of these little vase beads in it so that it'll kind of sit better on a desk or something. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really precious and I did finish it. So, you know, pat on the back. It's something, right? I need to not belittle my accomplishments. Like I shouldn't be like, it's not enough. Girl, sit down and Anything I accomplish is good, and I'm going to pat myself on the back, okay? Okay, I'm trying to be more nice to myself, if you can't tell. <laughs> so I finished that, and last but not least, I have one more finish to show you guys. Can you guess what it is? It's a diamond painting. I've been diamond painting a lot, so where my crojo has lacked my dojo, <laughs> my diamond my do pojo <laughs> help <laughs> send help my diamond painting motivation has skyrocketed <laughs> i have been really enjoying winding down at night by going to town on some diamond paintings and watching westworld anybody watch that show ooh do not have any chillins around when you watch that show there is so much body that's all. There's just so much body in that show. <laughs> it's really good, though. I've been watching that. I, um, yeah. So I've been watching that in diamond painting at night. And girl, I finished a diamond painting. Do y'all want to take a guess which one it is? I'm going a, I'm to a let you guess in your head right now. Which one do you think I finished? Let me show you. Let me show you. This is the face I make when I find out that I've been talking for the past, like, I don't know, 30 minutes with my microphone muted. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Let's just, let's, let's pick up where we left off. So I will show you the diamond painting that I completed. I'm going to meticulously watch my microphone levels and make sure that I'm not talking to nothing this time. Okay. So. The diamond painting that I completed and I'm really excited about because it's so beautiful is Wishes! Yay, 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 yay! Look at it! Ugh, it's so hard to fit all in frame. But um, I've shown you guys this one as a work in progress a few times now. And I actually completed her. It's crazy. I'll put a progress photo so you, can, you guys can see what exactly I've progressed since last time we talked. 
Um, but basically, I hadn't done any of her hair, her clothes, her face, none of that. And uh, she's done now, which is awesome. I'm just going to scoot back and try to show the whole thing. And show, like, more close-up. Um, it's really hard to do this. See, if I bump, I think last time I was showing this, I bumped my mic and it, it muted. But, uh, yeah, her whole shirt is made of ABs. So it's extra sparkly. And I just really love this painting because of all the purples and the pinks. And it's just so absolutely beautiful. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it before you ask. I might hang it up in my office. I have some blank walls that I could do that. But yeah, I don't really have a plan. I'm just excited to finish. And this might come as a huge surprise. Oh, I just knocked a, I just knocked a drill off. Oh, red alert! Red alert! <laughs> It's a pink one. <laughs> um, this might come as a surprise to you guys, but um, this is actually my first Diamond Art Club painting that I've ever completed, which is crazy. It's just because their paintings are so large, you know, and it takes me time. It takes me time to, to get it done. So this is my first Diamond Art Club that I ever completed. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, it's also, it was part of my first Diamond Art Club order. I got in... May of 2020 for my birthday my in-laws ordered me a couple diamond paintings I got to kind of like choose which ones I wanted and they ordered it for me and this was part of that first order so I'm really happy to finally have it completed and I think I did say when I was looking at this canvas in the past like I wish they put the artist's name on the canvas I'm pretty sure they do do that now it's just that this is a older canvas from a couple years ago um, so here she is. Beautiful. The artwork I think is by Erica Wiseman, otherwise known as maybe Erica the Goober. <laughs> I will correct that if I'm wrong. But um beautiful art, wonderful, love the colors, look at the sparkle in her shirt. Oh my gosh. And I can't wait to find somewhere to place this up and display it for me. I was gonna say for all to see, but I don't really have people over that often. <laughs> And I'm really, I'm just really happy that um, I've completed that. So with that being said, I have been diamond painting a lot lately. I've been really, really having a lot of fun with it. I've also been um, pretty interested in buying pens. I've been looking at all the pens. I haven't bought any because they're so expensive and it's hard to pull the trigger on, but I've been like really wanting to. Mm. I blame I blame some of you guys with amazing pen collections. Yeah, you make me want to buy all the things. But um, with that being said, I've been diamond painting a lot, a lot. I even purchased something new from Diamond Art Club this week. They had a special release. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll do an unboxing. But if you know, you know, I got one. I'm so excited. Okay, let me show you the diamond paintings that are in progress for me and that I have been working on in the past couple of weeks. The next section of the podcast is all of the things that I have made progress on. This isn't all of my whips. It's just the things that I have specifically made progress on in the past two weeks since we last talked. So yeah, let me show you what I've been working on for my whips in progress section. All right, so you've seen this one a few times, but this is my full crystal butterfly canvas. I've made a lot of progress on it. Oh, and the last canvas, in case you're wondering, is round. That's really important to a lot of people. So I've made a lot of progress on this one. Most of the pink background is now completed. The only part I have left is right here next to the antenna. Do not ask about the method to my madness because there is no method to my madness. Uh, there's random washi tape on here. You know, sometimes I feel like sectioning off. Sometimes I feel like multi-placing and then I'm like, no, wait, I want a single place. No, wait, I want a checkerboard. No, wait, I want to use my tweezers. So just pay no attention. There's no method. I just kind of fill it in how I feel like. And that is the only part that I have left right here, right here on my boob buckle. Yep. <laughs> here you go. Right here. So the full background is almost complete. And then I will just 
get to enjoy filling in the rest of the butterfly. I've had a lot of fun with this canvas. It is full crystal plus one crystal AB. She did correct me on that. I thought it was a regular AB, but it's a crystal AB. So it's like a diamond painting drill on crack. It is very special. And uh, yeah, I've had so much fun with this. You guys know I love it. If you guys want to purchase one for yourself or check out Dawn's shop, I will have it linked below. You can support a small business. It's always nice to do. Dawn, Dawn I think it's just her, you know, maybe her family, but she is a very small business and, you know, it's always nice to support. And this painting is really beautiful and I've had a lot of fun with it. I'm not really super used to doing squares, so I feel like I, my placement isn't super straight um but I'm learning I'm getting better this canvas has helped me practice my multi-placing a lot because of how much of a pink there is um but yeah it's it's been a good time I really enjoyed working on that canvas the second diamond painting I've been working on because I want to limit myself to only two in progress at a time that way I'm not going overboard and you know, I have enough storage containers and all of that. And it also gives me space to have one round and one square one going at a time. So the next one that I've been working on, I've actually been pulling out my Adventure Time diamond painting. I love this one. I've been pulling it out. This one's round. It goes by a little bit quicker, but um, I put some time into this one this week. Actually, like last night, I put some time into this one. Ooh. I'm trying to fit it in camera, but here it is. It's really long. I'm not going to unroll the whole thing because, you know, I haven't worked on that part, but it's taller than I am. The section that I've made progress on is right here at the bottom of Princess Bubblegum. So right here in this area, that would be the section that I've been laying down some drills. This is a artwork by Mandy Manzano. She is known for her stained glass look and she does do a lot of like characters and fandoms and oh my gosh she has this one called Wells of Salvation that has like Jesus standing and I think there's it's kind of like a waterfall cascading off his robe. That one is so stunning, so meaningful to me um, and I just I love Mandy's artwork so much and I would love to collect more of it but like diamond painting is an expensive hobby I don't know how you guys do it sometimes it's 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 fun but you know it can be a very slippery slope but I would love to collect more of her artworks because they're so beautiful this one in particular is of Adventure Time it is a cartoon that makes me so happy I love it I love every character in that show the colors in this make me so happy I just love working on this so much and I can't wait to someday have it finished and hanging in my room and I could just ah, look at how much time I dumped into it and just enjoy how beautiful it is. Okay, so yeah, been working on that. And then apart from diamond painting, I really haven't been doing too much crafting of my own, you know, outside of stuff for the shop and, and work and commissions and whatever. Um, I just really haven't done too much outside of that um I I don't know I've just been like really really invested in diamond painting at night when I do have my little bit of free time um so other things that I'm like working on that's not necessarily a crafty project I want to let you guys know that I am still actively working on my crochet tutorial series my learn to crochet series here on the channel um, I know there have been some people asking about that and don't worry I have not dropped it I have not forgot about it I'm still actively working on it I actually have a couple episodes filmed I just need to edit them and perhaps today when I'm sitting down and putting together this podcast to post tomorrow I will be able to get some editing done on those as well so I just want to let you guys know that's still an active project that I'm working on and um, I will be posting more updates to that series as soon as I can I have also been working on Calpel stuff. I have not, you know, I still fully intend to do the videos every month, but I think I am going to change up how I do them. I want to start doing my monthly Calpels videos as more of a 
retrospective in review type thing like in summary because I just realized it's too much stress for me to have the deadline and be like oh my gosh I have to get this get this video up by the first of the month and um just panic over that and so um plus I think if you are in Cal Pals you know then you're in the discord and you will already know what the theme is and what the patterns are uh, each month so there isn't really much of a point of me making a video telling it because I'm not announcing it in the video. It's already known. You know what I'm saying? So I want to start changing that up a little bit and do them more of a like in review. So each month I will show like, for example, the video I make this month will be January in review in Cal Pals and I'll show off all the January projects that people completed. Unfortunately, I did not complete January's. I don't time just slips away through your fingers and it's really not intentional and I feel really bad about it and worried about it. I think that's why there's been so much of a delay on me getting up the Cal Pals video this month is because I'm like, what the heck? I didn't do the project and normally in the videos I show what I did each month and it wasn't on purpose. It was just like I kept saying, okay, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then I just never got to it. And I feel so bad about it, but it's okay. I'm only human and there's just been a lot going on. So I want to make a video in review and I will show what other people made and things like that. Now this month's theme in Cal Pals is so good and the patterns are so cute. I mean, they are every month, but this month I am not missing out on. I don't care how many things I have to do and how many other crochet commissions I have. I am going to squeeze in time to do this month's project. So I fully, 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 fully intend to do the February project. So I want to do a video at some point this month and it will be a January in review. And then I'll still show you guys the patterns because I know there's a lot of people that watch this channel who may not necessarily crochet or may not be in Cal Pals. So I want to make the video still relevant and entertaining for you guys. And so I'll still like show the patterns and show what we worked on. It'll just be like at the end of the month. So um, if you guys want to keep up with Cal Pals and be a part of the crochet along, you got to join the Discord to get the patterns and what the current monthly challenge is and to enter the giveaway. And then I will just show off like this is what we did in the last month in my videos. So that way there's not as much of like a stress or a rush to get it up. It'll just be up when it's up, when I complete it. Because, <laughs> you know, these things take time. All right. So still working on that. I just basically, I want to let you guys know that I'm still working on things for my channel. It's just that these podcasts are the bare minimum, you know, the very least. And the very least, I will... What? That doesn't make sense. The very... What? <laughs> I mean, my brain is not functioning. I already said this once and I'm just like, how do I say this again? But at the very least, this podcast will be up on my channel every other Friday. Um, everything else on top of that is extras and is just as I get time. You know, I don't want to be compared to another YouTuber or another YouTube channel that uploads like every day because you don't know their situation that that may be their full-time job, right? So they have all the time in the world to work on it, or they may not have another job elsewhere and they can just focus on creating and, and developing their YouTube channel. You know, you just never know what somebody's situation is. And the fact of the matter is, is that I have all of my eggs in so many baskets and I'm trying to be a part of so many different things. There's a lot of moving wheels in my life. And, you know, with my YouTube, it's not monetized or anything like that. It's it's just strictly a hobby at this point and it is for fun and just something that I do because I enjoy it and I love it. So I can just do that as much as I can and the rest will follow. So hopefully you guys are okay with that and being patient. I really appreciate your patience as I get stuff up, but please know there's a lot of stuff that is in progress behind the scenes for the YouTube channel. A lot. I have so many video ideas that I can't wait to complete. So Yep, my channel is a work in progress. I'll just include that in the work in progress category. All right, so let's get on into other stuff, just the other stuff to wrap up this podcast that I have to talk about. 
Yay, so I actually have two packages to open today. I'm so excited. One of them is all the way from Australia, which is dope. I'm so happy that it got here. I really expected it to take longer. So the first package I'm going to open up is something that I purchased off of Etsy from Zebracorn Creations. I will link her shop down below, but Georgia, um, she is a fellow admin with me in Cal Pals, and she has started a shop and she started selling really cute stitch markers. Stitch markers are little clippy things. I mean, you'll see when I open them, but the function of them is to help you count stitches when you're crocheting or knitting. And also to when you're crocheting, you can like put it in a certain loop of the stitch. And so your work won't get unraveled if somebody's pulling on it like a child or an animal. Um, so this came all the way from Australia. I'm not going to show you guys the package because it's got information like all over it on every which side. So I'm going to open this on up and show you guys what I ordered. I'm so happy I got here. I'm really excited to see them. And, you know, shipping wasn't too bad. At least she didn't charge me <laughs> too bad of a rate for shipping because it is sent in an envelope. It's light enough to be sent in an envelope. And, and how do you say envelope? Envelope or envelope? Let me know. And um, it made for sh cheaper shipping rates. Okay, I'm going to get everything out of there. Okay, so it came in this cute little package. It's all packaged up, all cute. And we got a little, oh, upside down, a little birdie sticker on it. It's so pretty. Okay, let's open this on up. How cute! Oh my god, I got, <laughs> they're so cute. I love them. So these are the ones I chose. I chose a set that has a little root beer, a lollipop, and a donut. Isn't that so cute? And they are, what do you call these? Lobster claw? I don't know. They're the kind of stitch markers that I really like that open, it's like an open and close clasp. Um, I will show you like this. These are my favorite kind of stitch markers, um, but I love them. I love collecting stitch markers, so this is really cute, and I love the packaging, how she crocheted a chain to put them on, but she is based in Brisbane, 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 Australia, and you can find all of her links at uh, linktree, linkter.ee slash zebracorn, but just look up zebracorn creations on Etsy and you will find Georgia. That is so cute. I love it. Thank you, Georgia. I love it a lot. Thank you so much for my package. I really enjoy it. Check her out if you guys, um, she also sells finished amigurumi and stuff like that if you guys are in, oh, I'm dropping this, in Australia, but these stitch markers are to die for. They're so cute. All right, so I just wanted to open that up and show that off, and then this next package, I'm so excited for. I can't even express to you. So this comes, I feel like, I feel so bad that these people send me stuff over and over. Like, can you stop sending me things? Oh my gosh, you're making me feel like I have this huge debt <laughs> with you. I'm like, oh my God, I need to send them a giant box full of things. Like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I just, I don't know how to handle people being so nice and <laughs> gifting me things. I don't know how to function. Um, so this package comes, here's how it looks. It's not really anything fancy. It's just in a Scotch poly mailer. So I'll just pull the things out and show you. This comes from my friend, Ginny. Um, Ginny is so kind. Ginny is the one who sent me two beautiful diamond painting pens that I use all the time. And, uh, she's, she's just so sweet. And I, I love getting to chat with her and, and she's just awesome. So what's in this package? She decided that she wanted to send me some waxes to try. Uh, confession time. I have never used a special wax when diamond painting. The only wax I've ever used is just the stuff that comes in kits, whether it be diamond art club or, you know, blue wax or dark pink wax or light. I've just only used that stuff. I have a little baggie full of all the waxes that I get in kits. So you know, I've always been interested in trying other waxes, but I guess I never really felt like the wax that comes in kits wasn't doing its job. Like it was doing its job good enough. So I really never felt the need to try anything else. Um, but I have a feeling that my world is about to be opened. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Ginny decided that she wanted to send me some waxes to try from a variety of different shops and makers. So I don't know what's in here. I don't know what wax is in here, but that's all I know is that she wanted to send me some wax to try. So I might make another future follow-up video of my review on these different waxes to try for diamond painting. If you don't know what that is, you basically um, put the wax in the end of a diamond painting pen and that's what helps you pick up the drills the better the wax is then it's going to stick for longer and you don't have to reload it as much and so people have their preferences also there's a lot of scented waxes things like that so mm. also jenny has a daughter hi abby <laughs> Jenny has a daughter. She's the one who calls me mini unicorn. -y. <laughs> I just think it's the cutest thing. Like I don't have a child and I'm just like, your child is so cute. Hi, Abby. You're cute. You're so sweet. Your mom tells me all about you. Um, but she literally, Jenny texted me yesterday and said her daughter was asking when I was going to stream again. I was like, oh my God, my heart. Um, so all that to say, apparently Abby has sent me something as well. I don't know what it is, but she's excited for me to open it. So hi, Abby, I'm going to open whatever you sent me in here and I'm sure it's wonderful. So I don't know like what's, I don't know like, okay, I see wax in the top of here. So we're going to do the wax first and then we'll see what Abby sent me. Okay. So right off the bat, we got some Randa's Crafty Corner Apple Cinnamon Scented Putty. Okay. Uh, I've seen this around. I've seen randa's wax around and it's it's i don't know it's popular i always see it everybody using it so i'm sure it's good does it smell like apple cinnamon oh it does oh my god it smells like apple cinnamon i don't know what i was expecting but like wow okay very excited to try that out you guys will have to let me know your I know that certain waxes people like to use in their multi-placers, certain ones they like to use in their single placers. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know what this... Oh, sh wait, she numbered it? <clears throat> I don't know. This has a five on it. Okay, so this is some blue wax in the little heart containers. Well, I'm just dropping stuff. I think she said there's a chart in here that's going to tell me what's what, but I'm just pulling stuff out to just see you know how it goes. Oh my gosh. She sent me one of the new diamond art club trays. Oh, I've been wanting to check this out. <gasps> Interesting. Intre I'm just checking out what diamond art club has got going on, you know, like weird. Okay. So diamond art club upgraded their kits where, um, they include different trays and this is, you know, not bad. It's better than what they, included before and it's glittery so that's that's cool that's a new tray that they're gonna include in their kit so thank you for sending me that I really wanted to check that out you know obviously as a tray maker I want to know what they're doing <laughs> um let's see oh my gosh oh my goodness she sent me some multi-placers what oh my gosh so they're like little two placers i've wanted to try out two placers so bad whoa all different ones oh my girl three placer a metal three placer thank you so much i've been using a plastic three oh here's a skinny one. <gasps> oh, thank you so much jenny i've been wanting to try this so bad <gasps> dope metal multi-placers so i've got metal three placers and metal two placers so excited to try that out dude now i'm even more excited to diamond paint okay i don't even know what is going on what is all of this what is this okay oh here's the note maybe i should have pulled that out first to be or wow everything's sm i'm smelling so oh wow she typed a whole letter. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she typed me a whole letter. Oh my God. Okay. So that's just telling me like what everything is. I, wow. That's okay. 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 We got some more stuff in here. We got, okay. You know, let me, I'm just going to follow the letter. Everything in the bag with the silver and white butterflies is from an Etsy shop called Pretty Placers. 
Oh! Oh, 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 this. This? This. This? No? I'm confused as heck. I'm gonna take a minute and, like, read and understand what is in front of me, and then I'll show you guys. <laughs> okay, I read this letter. I'm just gonna show you, like... Ginny is thorough. <laughs> gonna show you this letter okay so now i understand what's in front of me we're gonna try that again i'll read what she said um and then show you guys what she sent okay so uh she typed a letter she says because apparently i struggled to read her cursive handwriting last time i feel bad that's probably just a me problem okay don't worry about it so she typed this letter up and it's like on good quality paper i mean okay she means business so she said since she's including a lot of small things she wanted to give me a list of what's here just in case i fall in love with something and i want to order more for myself which absolutely thank you so much because if I really love these waxes, then maybe it'll change the game and I'll continue using it. Um, and then she said, Abigail, her daughter, wanted to send me something and it is in this envelope. <laughs> I'm, I'm really interested to see what she sent me. And apparently, Abby has watched all of my non-live videos at least four times each. And I'm just like, that's so cute. Uh <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm literally gonna cry that's so sweet oh my god um hopefully she's helping you increase your watch hours so we need to get to a thousand subscribers to get monetized and four thousand watch hours which like i'm not even close to so it's gonna be a while um <laughs> she said hopefully she's helping you increase your watch hours um and then she made she numbered these things and told me what they are so first things first this is from Pretty Placers. I've seen these around the internet. Um, two wax crayons. Okay. So she says that she uses these for ABs. Pretty Placers. Coconut Calypso. I love coconut. Scent. So I guess these are scented and they're kind of like crayons that stick to the drill. So she said she likes to use these for um ABs and she said they can be sharpened with a sharpener that has a bigger size or a crayon sharpener. All right, that's cool. I'm really excited to try these out. So it literally looks like this, a crayon. And um you would the it's sticky, you know, so you can stick it to the to the drills and pick them up. So I'm sure there's people who like to use this for their full diamond painting. Um which is cool. Maybe I love it. I don't, I have no idea. Like, like I said, I've only ever used the traditional wax that came in kits. So we got this one in Coconut Calypso, Pretty Placer. And I'll link all of these shops down below. This one is called Bird of Paradise. I got to smell. Oh, that smells so good. Bird of Paradise. I won't take it out of its box, but yeah. So it's like, a, it's like a crayon that you can stick drills with so cool then there's two other containers in here that are not little uh crayon pens let's see what are they i think they're just like other wax other wax why can't i open this oh it's tied in a knot okay <laughs> user error. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is also from the same shop, but this is just regular wax. This is called mountain air. Cute. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm really curious. How do people make this? Like how do people know what to put in wax? Oh, that smells good. And it's got little glitters in it. I feel so enlightened. Like, this is so... What? This is all so new to me. Ah, that smells so good. I love these little containers, too. Oh, that smells good. Okay. I bet it's really fun to play around with these scents. This one is strawberries. Ooh, and it does smell like strawberries. This one's got uh, sparklies in it. Wow. I'm so excited to use these. I don't even know what to use first. So that is all from Pretty Placers. I'm excited to try those out. 
Then she sent me some Patty Wax. Um, Patty Wax is the same shop that you might hear called Distracted by Diamonds. So Distracted by Diamonds is like the half of their shop that sells diamond paintings. And then they also sell wax, Patty Wax. And this is a really popular. I wonder, do they, do they come in these containers or did you just send them like this? Like, is this how it comes from the shop? in this cute little container because that's really interesting um so we got a patty wax fountain of youth scent and it's just a big old block of wax i'll have to watch some videos that gives me tips on how to use these and maybe i'll make a video of my own fountain of youth i don't know what that smells like but it's got a picture of a baby <laughs> it looks like one of those babies from johnny johnny if y'all know what i'm talking about <laughs> um in front of a fountain I don't know what it is. It smells like fresh linen. Like a fresh linen clean smell. That's what it smells like. Really cute. And it's got little star glitters in it. Yeah. Okay. And it did. I don't know if it comes from the shop in these little containers, but this is how she sent it. Oh, it says literally says on here. <laughs> the little containers don't come with the wax when you get on Etsy. I included them because they are what I used to store mine and I thought they would travel better in the containers. Okay, thank you. So it doesn't come in these containers. Ginny just sent them. So this one is Georgia Sunrise. Ooh la 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 la. See it's got it's got um sparklies in it or confetti. And it's got pictures of like a raspberry and a peach. Let's smell it. Let's see if it smells like a Georgia sunrise. Oh, that's good. Oh, I love how, like, do you smell the, when you're diamond painting with these, do you just like, do you get whiffs of the aroma? Whoa, that smells good. I love it. Okay, and then she sent another, a third patty wax option to try called Super Sticky Patty Wax SS. So it's in a cry laughing container. She put a sticky over it, but look. <laughs> this is my favorite emoji. I use it constantly because this is just my constant mood. Um, but this is called Super Sticky. Uh, some people love it. Some people hate it that I've seen on YouTube. And you have to kind of like, I know you don't stab your pen in there. You scrape it. Um, but it's like, I don't know. It's an interesting, different formula that I'm excited to try out. Very excited. And I love the little tin that it comes in. So that's awesome. Um, okay. And then these are Blue Wax Hearts from Star Ore. And you can get these on Amazon. Let's see. Very cool. Oh, I love these containers. This is perfect. Um, I believe I've gotten these not in a kit, but I bought a random um, diamond painting pen off Amazon and they gave me a few of these blue hearts. But I don't know if I can tell a difference from the other hearts. Maybe this is different. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I love the little containers too. That's awesome. Thank you. And then last but not least, the Randa's Crafty Corner Apple Cinnamon Scented Putty. Yas. The only wax that I don't have here is like Wee Wax, right? From Laura. I need to order some of that. And then we'll have like a true show. I should do one of those like showdown videos where I compare them and compare and contrast. Oh, this really is like putty, just like stuck in there. Look, it's it's like a putty. Oh, it smells really good though. That's awesome. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, the only one I don't have here that I like know off the top of my head that's really popular is Wee Wax. So, wow, you have set me up for success, Ginny. That's so exciting. And then she sent me the new tray from the... Um, the new diamond art club kits. I was really interested to see what those are like. So thank you so much for that. Very interesting. This one's kind of like wonky, but Hey, this is way better than, you know, what they were sending. And then the multi-placers. So excited for this. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to diamond paint. Literally. I'm going to diamond paint all night tonight. <laughs> I have so many other things to do, but I just want to diamond paint. That's just the mood I'm in. And I'll probably be on next podcast and I'll be like, so I've been sewing a lot. Like I just go through phases, you know? So that's, you'll get to know me and you'll, you'll start to realize that that's my personality. I kind of have a rotation of things that I get really into. Mm. 
All right. Last but not least, let's finish out this podcast and see what Abby sent me. <laughs> That's so cute. Just this like eight year old kid who likes me and wants to be my friend. I want to be your friend too, Abby. What did she send me? Oh my gosh. That's so nice. <laughs> oh. oh. She sent me some cover minders. Look how beautiful this butterfly is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and a unicorn. That is so sweet. You're so sweet, Abby. Thank you so much. I love them. I will get to use them tonight when I'm using all of my wax. And it's on a card that says, you are super smart. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Thank you so much. I think you're super smart. <laughs> so cute. Oh, I love these. Thank you so much. Oh, beautiful. And uh, bonus, I also like to cross stitch. So every time I get a cover minder, I also can use it for cross stitching as a needle minder and keep my needles put too. So you know, they have a dual function for me and I'm starting to grow a little collection over here. And I think I think that um, people are starting to realize that I like unicorns because I've got like a little unicorn collection growing over here. So thank you so much for the for the unicorn cover minder and the beautiful butterfly. The butterfly. Oh, I wonder if I wonder if you sent me that to go with my butterfly diamond painting. I don't know if that was intentional or like a coincidence, but thank you. I love it. I'm going to use it tonight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're so nice okay so that is all I've got for today oh my gosh so many things that's all I've got and speaking of streaming I love going live and from where I came from before I started this channel um I went live like multiple times a week all the time and I love it and that's where I've made a lot of friends it's just like like I said I'm just trying to do too many things at once and it's really hard to balance so I love streaming and I want to do it very soon. I am anticipating, is that the word? I'm hoping that I can get a stream in this weekend. Things are going to be kind of socially busy this weekend, but I'm really hoping I can at least pop on for a while on Saturday. If I do decide that, then I will schedule the stream. I'll try to do it 24 hours in advance, but at the very least, like, hours in advance and I'll schedule it so it, sh it will show up in your subscription box and say oh there's a planned stream from M on this day so I do plan to stream again soon I don't know what I'll be doing but we'll figure it out later all that to say thank you guys you're awesome thank you for listening or watching this podcast today I hope you had fun and had a peek into my life in summary I've just been really into diamond painting lately and um yeah. But however, I have a lot of really cool crochet stuff coming. I have a list of commissions that I'm working on of some really cool, unique stuff. And I cannot wait to show that off to you guys and show you what I come up with. Um, you know, I, I always love crocheting. And even though I'm not like dying to do it every waking minute at the moment, um, I'm sure that it'll, my crochet will, will come back to me because I have so many exciting projects that I'm like super excited for to get into. Um, but that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. Uh, be sure that you get plugged in. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you get my new videos in your subscription box. So make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications. I don't upload that often. So I probably Promise you're not going to get too many notifications. Okay. It's not like I upload like twice a day, every day. So turn on your notifications. So you'll know when I am uploading or when I do go live. Um, and all the other places you can find me is always in my description. If you want to become a supporter of this channel financially and get some cool perks, you can become a member on Kofi. Um, or maybe you pronounce it coffee. K O dash F I. <laughs> It's kind of like Patreon, but it's more geared towards like crafty uh, artists and things like that. So you can become a member over there or you can give a one-time tip. 
never, ever, ever, ever necessary. Um, but if you do become a member, there are some cool perks that you can have access to in Discord. You get to watch all my videos early. And I also have a chat room in Discord called YouTube Channel Feedback, where I ask questions and discuss things about my videos and YouTube channels directly with my Kofi members. So if you want to be a member and get plugged in and just be like, have that be in that like extra tier. Also, you get your name at the end of all my videos. So if you just want to like go the extra mile, the option is there, but it's never necessary. Check it out. Join my discord. It is a collection of chat rooms. So if you like chatting with people, particularly about crafty things, about crochet, about knitting, about diamond painting, about gaming we we had an among us night the other night that was so much fun so if you just like doing that we have a minecraft server we play on together so if you just want to make some friends and have a place to chat with people real time join my discord do all the things if you're one of those people it's like well, i want a tray i never can get a tray i'm really sorry and i hate how hard they are to get and i wish that oh my god i just that's a solution i really would like to solve i just don't know how um but my best advice to you is to follow me on twitter at munamade because that is where i post alerts about when i restock my shop every week and i post that like i i line the tab up in the middle of me pushing publish on the listing so it's like immediate and if you have your notifications on, you will know exactly when I post. So that's my recommendation to you guys. Anyways, I'm parched. My water is depleted. So I'm out. I'm going to go. I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful rest of your weekend. Maybe I'll see you in a stream soon and some other stuff that I'm finishing up editing. But thanks for watching. Thank you, Jenny, for sending me this freaking amazing package. Um, and uh Cool. I'll see you guys next time in whatever I do next. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I hope that the sun is shining and that you're alive. Which, if you're watching this, then hopefully you're alive. And that's a good thing. Congratulations. All right. Bye.